South Africa's economic reforms fall short of their goals despite claims of progress. President Cyril Ramaphosa's 2020 plan aimed for growth, reduced unemployment and reduced corruption. But economic growth remains slow, unemployment is high and challenges persist. Operation Vulinlila reports uh, progress in some structural reforms such as digital spectrum release and private investment in the Durban Container Terminal. However, it acknowledges delays in certain areas. Uh, joining me is Shanti Pai, economist and senior manager, PwC South Africa. Shanti, it's nice to have you join us on the show. Very good to speak to you. Good morning and good morning to everybody else. Cool. Now, President Sir Ramaphosa announced that his administration would consider restructuring, uh, recon reconstruction, and of course, a, a recovery plan um, for its country. And the aim was um, to ensure growth and transform um, the country's economy. So, uh, however, when you look at it, you discover that the economic growth remains slow, according to reports. Anyway, so what factors do you think have contributed to this um, sluggish growth? Uh, that's actually against what so many people had uh, speculated. It's very important, of course, to understand um, that, you know, in order for any economy to grow, um, especially, you know, such as ours, where you've got, obviously, uh, high unemployment, and certainly you have got all the resources and all the challenges, that you want investment. One of the key things that have been um, a, a, a big impediment to growth has been uh, access to investment, so investors coming to South Africa and putting money, whether they are putting their money in sector in manufacturing, in agriculture, and various sectors. And so, one of the things that was important then to say, how do you ask, what are the things that investors are complaining about? And so, they had listed a number of issues. Which, uh, then the government decided, um, and I think you know, that uh, you are also speaking, uh, you are speaking to earlier around then what do you have to do? What are the things that investors are complaining about? This has included um, very important things such as, uh, uh, you know, infrastructure, uh, uh, railways, water, um, and a number of other issues, policy issues. And so this thing um, uh, that they've released in terms of the uh, uh, operation uh, <clears throat> uh, is that one of the things I want to do is to actually take out all of those things that are impairing and to grow. And I think you're quite right when you mentioned the issue that seeing the growth here. And it's very clear that we are not seeing that growth yet because many of these uh, of these reforms, as they are coming on board, they still have not yet been completed and therefore have not filtered into growth and employment. Areas that have policy issues, and of course, uh, that would have to do with implementation. But then um, Operation Vulinlela claims significant progress were made in terms of the implementation of structural reforms by this administration. So... Can you actually provide insights into which specific reforms have been successful, if there are, and what impacts those um, reforms have had on the economy? It's a very long list. <laughs> you can uh, you can appreciate, uh, and different reforms at different stages of achievement um, that they have put. For example, um, you know, uh, two uh, a number that have been completed. For example, one of the big things in South Africa, skills. Um, and one of the things that has been needed to be done is to reform the skill sector to be able to attract what we call critical skills. Um, there are skills we don't have that we should actually go out that are really, really important for the growth of South Africa. Uh, and so the government has completed this critical skills list. And that really then has to be taken um, into the Department of Home Affairs and the Department of Affairs that allows people to be able to, you know, to come to South Africa and get the visa to be able to work in sectors where the skills are in, in shortage. So that has been very, very important. Of course, the big thing that people have talked about, and I think I'm sure you hear about all the time, is the rail infrastructure and logistics. And there really what has been very, very important is to try, obviously, because of the, as, a, as an economy, you want to be able to export, uh, especially in the, in the mine sector. And the mineral sector has really, really struggled. So one of the things they're highlighting in the report, you know, they've had to complete, um, you know, uh, a paper for, 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 for rail, and then be able that right kind of policy. So um, the, the transfer itself, which is the rail um, uh, authority, will then also work towards uh, a partner that will help actually reform, actually work on and the port in a way that is actually more efficient and more effective. So those are that. Then there's a whole other number of things, you know, what the development that at different stages. Of okay, thank you um, so much, Auntie Pai, for talking to us. That's the much uh, we can take.